Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Adam, Marketing Specialist, and I'll be your moderator. We are excited to welcome Dr. Tanya Brown as our speaker tonight, who will show us how to save five minutes per procedure with color coding. Dr. Brown is the founder and owner of the Center for Cosmetic and Restorative Dentistry in Virginia, and she is a member of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, the American Dental Association, the Virginia Dental Association, and the Academy of General Dentistry. Before we get started, we have a few reminders for you. At any point during tonight's webinar, we encourage your participation through the chat and Q&A features. Please type any questions you may have into the Q&A section of your control panel, and we'll answer them live at the end of the presentation. Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand, and this webinar is sponsored by Zerk. Dr. Brown, welcome. Thanks for being with us tonight. We're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you so much, Adam. I appreciate it. Um, I'm so excited to be part of this online program today. You know, we have all survived uh, 2020 and 2021 is um, going to be a great year. And so I'm, I'm excited about helping you make that a stellar, stellar year. And, uh, you know, being that it's the beginning of the year, we have a fresh start to 2021. So I do believe that we have a unique opportunity to take great care of patients and to help keep them healthy as well as support our fellow healthcare providers. Uh, you know, we're still in the middle of a pandemic and um, hopefully with vaccines and things that are rolling out that that gets um, easier and easier and everybody stays healthy. So, you know, so many doctors have told me over the years that their jobs keep getting harder and harder and they're working harder um, and they're getting less than stellar results. And so part of my job is to help you become more efficient in your practice. And um, certainly Zerk has helped me become more efficient in my practice as well as Shine and all the things that they um, supply and help uh, with design and Dentrix and all the things that Henry Shine provides to us as dentists and dental teams. So Today, we get to focus on practice efficiency so that 2021 can be a stellar year for each one of you. So since we'll sp be spending the next few minutes together, um, I'd like to share a little bit about myself. I was lucky enough to start my career as a dental assistant at age 16, and that eventually gave me the wild-haired idea to become a dentist and so eventually start my own practice. And so if I can do this, I know that you can do this. So we know that dentistry is a fabulous profession and that we have the opportunity to change patients' lives every single day. And your patients trust you, especially in this time of COVID, and the, the fear that's surrounding that and the, some of the unknowns, your patients are looking to you for helping them stay healthy. They're looking um, to you to keep them healthy and to protect them and to provide a safe environment for them and to reassure them that you are doing everything possible to follow the guidelines and infection control and all the things that, you know, help keep your patients and team healthy. So, you know, as I've surveyed hundreds of dentists over the years, as I've spoken across the country and, um, you know, the, the ones that I found that are the happiest are the ones that have really tapped into this power that, and, and they have a high level of trust with their patients because this is where the magic is. And so my hope for each one of you is that the reason why your patients are sitting in your dental chairs is because they trust you. And the reason why they're calling your office is because they trust you. And the reason why they're coming back to you for years and years of care is because they trust you. And so that is an important gift that we have to share with our patients and our team and so my hope is that, you know, you can tap into that because that's where the magic is. And so when you know the vision for your practice doctors and you set that vision, team members, it's your responsibility to align with that vision. So do spend some time, invest some time in um, thinking about your vision and mapping that out and really defining your practice vision because the, the more clear you have your practice vision and mission laid out, 
the more clearly your team can align with that and share that with your patients. And that becomes evident, you know, throughout your culture. So doctors, it's your job to set the bar for your vision and your expectations and team members, it's your job to align with that vision and to meet and exceed that, those um, expectations. So let's, let's dive in here to our practice efficiency goal number one. And, you know, it's the big beginning of the year. We've come through kind of an interesting year in 2020 and now 2021 is here. So it's time to refocus. And what we know for sure is that when we have a positive mindset, we will get positive results. And so as we do adjust to the new normal, if you will, and as we do learn to work through some of the hurdles and obstacles and challenges that we've all faced, it is so important that we stay focused on having a positive mindset so that we can all have positive results. Truly, 2020, thankfully, was um, despite all the challenges and things that we had, um, all of my team members were able to return to work. We have stayed healthy. We're in the midst of vaccines and things like that. And a lot of my clients, the same thing, despite all the challenges that they faced, they all had really great years and um, they really worked hard to take care of patients and sort of regain what they had lost and, and um, regain that momentum. And so as you think about your mindset and where you are, where you've come from, and then where you want to be, what do you want your practice to look like? What type of dentistry do you want to practice? What do you want to focus on? What do you want your physical space to look like? You know, it's a really good time, but with, with Zerk and with Shine behind you and, and supporting you to look at those things. Maybe it's time for a redesign. Maybe it's time for an upgrade. So, you know, use the resources that you have. Certainly, if there's anything that I can do to help support you, you know, I'm happy to do that. But what do you want? want your schedule to look like each day? What do you want your team to look like each day? How do you want to use them in the best way um, and tapping into their strengths? And then, you know, what, how will you survive, but not only survive, but thrive in 2021 and beyond? And so, you know, what opportunities do you see or are there that you maybe need to take advantage of because I promise you when you have a positive mindset, you will get positive results. And, you know, that really reminds me of the story of the little boy that was walking down the beach one day and there was an older gentleman way down at the other end of the beach and he could see that there was all these things covering the beach and he could see that there was a little boy leaning down and he was picking up something and he was tossing it into the water. And as the older gentleman got closer to the little boy, he realized that scattered all over over the beach were starfish and there were thousands of them and the little boy kept leaning over and picking up the starfish and tossing them back in the water and as the man got close enough to speak and hear the little boy he said you know little boy there's thousands of starfish on the beach you know why are you trying to pick them up and throw them in the water and and um, the little boy looked up at him and he said sir it made a difference to that one. And that's how we should look at our patients and to our teams because it makes a difference to that patient. You know, some of you may be um, facing some of the patients that aren't quite ready to come back in or they've had, you know, some uh, various uh, medical problems or financial issues. And so, you know, it's our responsibility as dental professionals to keep the environment safe and healthy for them. And then also remind ourselves that, you know, sometimes we may need a little bit of patience or grace um, with them. And when we lean down to pick up that patient or to hold their hand or to help them, we realize that it makes a difference to that one and to each one as an individual. And that becomes so important to your entire practice, but it's absolutely critical to each patient. So let's think about um, the treadmill that we've been on. Um, I've said to a couple of patients this, this past year, you know, I feel like we've all been on a treadmill and 2020 was a blur. And so my part of my job is to switch gears now and to help you get off 
the treadmill for good. And, you know, a lot of us tell me, oh, I feel like I'm on a treadmill. All I do is work, work, work. I'm running from here to there and seeing all these patients. And so how do you get off the treadmill for good? And I believe that it starts with your beliefs. And part of that is that positive mindset, positive results, because it can be done. And I'm here as a testimony that it can be done. I have a fee for service practice in a very insurance driven area. And um, that's what calls me into consulting and to work with dental teams and dental professionals to help them get paid what they're worth and to help them, their team get paid what they're worth. And so here's the deal. It's never going to be easy to have all of your patients say yes. Some will say yes. Some will say no. But the key is that if we can't have the patients, if we're not getting the patients to say yes, when we're on all the PPO plans and HMO plans and all those plans and um, they have reduced fees, it's even that much harder to get them to say yes or to help them to say yes when we're off the plans. So by no means am I telling you to go back to your practice and become non-participating. What I'm saying is to look at your practice, first start with your vision and your mindset and your team's mindset and help them align with your vision for your practice by clearly defining that. And then look at the plans that you're participating with and look at what you're doing on a daily basis. Look at your schedule. Is it so packed full that you can't see another hygiene patient for six plus months? Then maybe it's time to look at some of those plans and and get rid of the ones that are the lowest reimbursing. You know, there are plenty of experts that can help you on that journey um, with phasing out of those plans. And, And I'm here to tell you that if I can do it, you can do it. And so there are ways to get off the treadmill for good. Certainly um, Zerk with their practice efficiency model and the color code method and all the things that they provide to support us as dental professionals, as well as Henry Shine and all the things that they provide as well to support your entire practice and entire team. You've got great people, you know, standing beside you. So now is the perfect time to become a better leader as the doctor and a better team member um, and um, follow your 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 practice vision. So let's talk about those beliefs and that positive mindset because this cycle of beliefs is everywhere around us. And I know most of you um, tuned in to listen to to about practice efficiency and we're, we're building up to practice efficiency. I promise you, I'll share lots of tips about how to be more efficient and save time. And I believe that not only saving five minutes procedure per procedure, but more like an hour to an hour and a half each day per assistant. Imagine what you could do with an extra hour in your day, dental assistants and clinical team and hygienists. Um, That's a phenomenal gift for you to have. So when we look at how people make decisions, how patients make decisions, how we make decisions, and we start to think about how, where our mindsets come from, we look at this cycle of beliefs. And I learned this several years ago from a local business consulting coach, um, the Van Sickle Group. And, we, and I've adopted this for dentistry and tweaked this um, because in dentistry, we call results case acceptance or you know when patients say yes and our treatment plans and our production. And those are all the things that you know make some of the results in our practices. But bottom line is that our beliefs determine our behavior. That's what we do and what we say and how we act on a daily basis. And that behavior influences and hopefully enhances our relationships with our patients, with our team members, with our specialists, with our um, doctors. And those relationships affect our results. And just like I showed you earlier, your patients trust you. That's why they're sitting in your dental chair. And when they trust you, they'll generally do what you recommend. Um, Pete Dawson told us a long time ago that any logical patient will say yes when they understand the benefits to them and the implications. And so, you know, they may not all say yes, that everybody needs a full mouth reconstruction and everybody needs 28 veneers. No, that's not what I'm talking about. But what I'm talking about is the patients that they want to stay healthy, they want to get healthy, and they want you to help them um, achieve that health or that new smile. And so there's lots of ways, you know, to do that in your individual practice. And those results 
reinforce those beliefs. And so if you think back to the first time you took a full series of x-rays and it might have taken you one or two hours to take that full series of x-rays and you thought, oh my goodness, I'll never get this. And I can remember when I was a dental assistant, um, you know, I exposed an entire box of panoramic film and the old daylight loaders. And, you know, that was several hundred dollars. And back in the eighties and nineties, that was a lot of money. And so I thought, oh gosh, how am I ever going to make this? And, but, you know, I stuck with it. And I realized that there were things that I needed to do and learn and practice and that, you know, made things easier and I got better at things and I had some great mentors. And, um, you know, now I can take an FMX in five or 10 minutes and just, you know, like most of you experienced team members. And so whether it's your first day on the job in dentistry or you are the lead dental assistant or lead hygienist or lead dentist in your practice, um, this cycle of beliefs is everywhere. And so, you know, when we believe what, you know, our patients will, um, that, that they will say yes, and that we believe that they trust us and we believe that they want, you know, to maintain good dental health, then we can help them achieve that. And that continues to reinforce our beliefs. And so it gets easier and easier to share with them um, the necessary steps to get healthier. So Adam, I have a question for our um, attendees and um, I want to take a quick poll. So on average, how often do you, if you're the dentist or the assistant or the hygienist or your clinical team have to get up and go find some dental supply or piece of dental equipment during a procedure? And so is that less than 25% of the time, 25% of the time, 50% of the time, 75% of the time, or 100% of the time? Because this was something that was very important to me. And I was finding that my dental assistants were having to get up in the middle of the procedure and break the flow and it killed our time management. And it cost me a fortune, especially when they came back and they're like, I can't find, you know, the intro camera, or I can't find the, you know, cement, or I can't find the you know, whatever supply that they needed. And so that's what really um, turned me on to Zerk and, and really helped me to get way more organized than I ever thought was possible. So Adam, can you share with us the results of that, of the poll um, from our attendees of, of where they are on this spectrum? Absolutely. About 45% say that uh, they spend less than 25% of the time. 31% say 25% of the time. And then Roughly the last 25% are around the 50 to 75% of the time. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for taking that poll. That helps me to help you. And so obviously you guys that are spending less than 25% of your time um, getting up to go find something, you're already doing a good job. Um, I hope that you'll have lots of tips to take home to, to even shorten that so that it's less than five or 10% of the time that you have to get up and go find some sort of dental supply or dental equipment. Um, for those of you that are having to get up more than half the time, Zerk is, has some great systems with the color code method that will help you tremendously. So I'm excited that now we get to talk about practice efficiency goal number two, and that is to take inventory of everything. If you really wanna be more efficient, you have to know what you have, where it's stored, how much of it you have, where it belongs, uh, you know, how it works. So everything in your practice, and I don't just mean physical supplies. I mean, look at your schedule, look at your budget, look at your patients, your equipment. You know, if you're running up and down the halls trying to share one intraoral camera in your practice, maybe it's time to invest in that or to put that on your wish list. Um, to to invest in because you know the the more um, dental equipment that you have that's readily accessible the more often um, and the more convenient it is for your team to use and to implement so I encourage you to look at everything in your practice. Um, look at what you can do to reduce overhead expenses. You know, maybe there's some dental supplies, uh, excuse me, some um, dental equipment and, and instruments that can be um, turned in and recycled for, you know, new um, instruments. Maybe there um, you have a bunch of scrap metal in your office and you can, you know, turn that in. Um, what can be digitized? What can be automated? Look at your chart notes. 
Look at your um, automated notes, your auto notes. What can you do to help simplify and to take inventory of every single thing? Look at your protocols. Do you have protocols in your practice? Do those need to be tweaked? You know, um, some of the main protocols that I teach teams to develop and to tweak is um, an x-ray protocol. Do you have that? Is it written down? A periodontal protocol. What do you believe about periodontal disease and how you treat that in your practice? Um, I promise, that you, promise you that if you will invest some time and go through those things as a team, that will help you be much more efficient and much more productive as a practice and take much better care of your patients. So look at those, x-ray protocol, emergency patient protocol, not emer medical emergencies. Yes, we need that as well, but I'm talking about emergency patients. You know, that's a very assistant driven procedure, or it can be, um, depending on your state, you know, laws and things for your dental assistants and your dental assistants training. But, you know, if, if I'm the doctor in the practice and my assistant comes to me and says, you know, Mrs. Jones has been up all night with, um, you know, a toothache. Um, it's sensitive to hot and cold. She's swollen. She has a fever. In about two seconds, I have a pretty good idea about what's possibly happening with that patient. And then, you know, I can look at an x-ray and look at the patient and, uh, you know, pretty quickly make some uh, at least initial diagnostic recommendations for that patient, you know, to have that tooth evaluated or to have endo or, you know, whatever the, that patient needs. And so look at the questions that you're um, asking your patients and streamline those, you know, um, ask a standard set of questions, take inventory of everything. Clean out your instruments, clean out your supply closets, clean out your operatories, look for the, you know, equipment that's broken, the, the dental supplies that are expired. Take the time to do that. You know, some of you may have a little bit of extra downtime right now because maybe, you know, patients are fearful or the schedules have changed or, you know, there's a lot of snow days or whatever. There's lots of things that are happening in our world. But use that time to your advantage because I promise you, you never have more time than you do at this moment. So take inventory of everything. And let me share with you some ways to do that. This is the Zerk color code method. And if you want to save time and save money, this is one of the best ways to do that. Um, not only do they have beautiful, well-constructed, um, antibacterial coated um, materials and, and cassettes and trays and tubs and organizers, but they have an entire system to help your practice be far more efficient. So um, my story is that I had used many of the Zerk products for years, but I never really implemented the entire color code method. Well, I'm happy to tell you that I have implemented that entire color code method in our office, and it has saved me lots of time and money. And, you know, if you think about an average dentist overhead is about $600 an hour, time is money. And so the more organized and more efficient you are, the uh, more productive and more profitable you will be. And so one of my goals is that my dental assistants will never have to leave the clinical area or break the procedure, break, you know, the flow and the procedure to get up and go find something. And, um, you know, that, that really um, says a lot. And like I told you a few minutes ago, I estimate that my dental assistants by using this method, um, they save on average about an hour to an hour and a half per day per assistant. And so we're able to see another patient. We're able to get lab work and scanning and lab, you know, all the things that go into that, get all of that done um, in a timely manner. They're able to do chart notes. They're able to follow up with patients and order dental supplies and, you know, uh, restock their rooms and all the things that, you know, we never have time to do. Right. And so, Dentists, my question to you is, are you delegating everything that's legally allowed to your highly skilled dental assistants? And dental assistants, are you prepared and are you willing to take the bull by the horns and implement more organization in your practice? Because it doesn't matter if this is your first week in dentistry or your 50th year in dentistry, the more organized and the more efficient you are, the less stress you will have in your practice. So ask yourself, 
How can we? How can we be more organized? How can we be more efficient? Label, use cassettes, use the color codes, set up all the rooms the same, take inventory, you know, and then think about how you, what, what you will do and how you will maintain that level of organization because it's not good enough to, you know, clean out the office and take inventory and then 30 days later, it's back to your old routines and stuff is thrown everywhere in every closet and nobody knows where anything is. And so um, I want you to really think about what you could do with that extra hour per day per assistant. Um, you know, I hope that this is not a picture of your office and stuff's just shoved in the closets and the cabinets. Um, you know, after practicing dentistry for 20 years, um, it, things do accumulate. I will, I will be honest with you. And so that clutter really competes for our attention. And not only does it compete for our attention, but it competes for our patient's attention. And so clutter spells dirty and it spells, you know, disorganized. And when patients see that their anxiety goes up, um, procedures take longer, you know, we're, we're less efficient. And so I hope that this is not your office. And if this is your office, there is hope because the Zerk, um, uh, team and your Henry Shine rep will certainly help you turn this around so that it's a gorgeous, organized, um, clean, um, efficient workspace. You know, we know that clutter equals chaos. And again, I hope your um, trays and, and work areas do not look like this where there's, you know, it looks like a bomb went off. And I hope that um, your office is, is very organized. And like I said, if it's not, we have lots of systems that can help you. Um, you know, when your operatories look like this and patients see this, it, it looks disorganized. It gives them a poor impression of your practice. You know, it definitely increases their dental anxiety. Um, it's It doesn't look very professional and it increases not only their stress, but your stress because now you're trying to sort through all these dirty instruments and find something or, you know, it rolls off the, the tray or the, the cassette. And so um, it gets it gets a little little crazy, as you know. So take the time to invest in your clinical areas. This is where your production is generated. This is the most important area in your practice. Um, some of the best investments you can make is in your clinical area. Um, that is the engine that drives your practice. You know, my if you see my private office, it is a hole in the wall. It is no windows. I saved all those windows in our office for the patient operatories and the clinical areas um, because my office, you know, I'm generally not in my private office and um, it's just enough for me to have enough space to work and, you know, sign um, lab scripts and, and um, do referrals and all the things, treatment planning and all that stuff that I do. Um, but I'm generally not in there very much during the day. And so, you know, spend the time and, and look at your office with a fresh set of eyes. Um, one of the best exercises that I've done as a team is everybody at one of our team meetings, everybody got a legal path and we started in the parking lot. And we wrote down everything that we saw. So if there was a, you know, weeds in the front flower beds, if there was trash in the parking lot, if there was a cobweb at the front door, and we walked through our entire practice, um, taking the perspective of our patients. And sometimes, you know, we come in the back door, so we don't even pay attention to what's going on in the reception area and at the front door. And, um, you know, we can become sort of blinded by our surroundings. And so it's really important to look at what your patients see. And, and I encourage you to do that as a team and then go back, go through your entire office and look up, you know, is the light falling out? Is there dust bunnies hanging? Are there dust bunnies in the floor? You know, are there cobwebs or there old magazines, you know, go through your entire office and, and make a list and then meet as a team and divide that list up into things that cost nothing, you know, throwing out the dead plant and throwing away the magazines that are, you know, torn up and shattered and shredded. Um, things that cost a little, you know, purchasing new decor, or new, you know, equipment and things that cost a lot of, you know, um, redesigning an entire new office and, you know, starting from scratch and upgrading. Um, and then work through those lists and, you know, make your wish list because certainly we don't want clutter to equal chaos in your office. 
So here's part of your solution. Everything has its place and there is a place for everything. Zerk color code spells organization. Patients notice that the cleanliness, the organization, the pretty colors, it looks neat, it looks clean, it looks organized. It is very efficient and this makes your day flow so seamless. So get organized with color. Um, if you're not using cassettes, I personally use cassettes in my office. We've used those for a long time. I love these. We use these in hygiene. We use them in my, you know, every procedure that we do has a cassette. This helps to keep instruments together. There's no sorting. It protects your patients and your team from getting, you know, punctures. Um, it protects the instruments from getting broken and um, the mirrors from getting scratched. Um, this is very neat and pleasing at chair side. It's very efficient and it's a, a very minimal or low cost investment. Um, the other thing that I want you to know is that these cassettes and the trays and the tubs meet and exceed the OSHA requirements of um, transporting your instruments to and from sterilization. Um, the cost for this is pennies compared to the time savings and the efficiency and the productivity that you can have in your practice by implementing this color code system. Um, the other thing that Zerk has is the um, antibacterial coating, which as we know has always been important, but even now it's even more so. Um, patients are looking at our sterilization. They're, they're aware of our infection control. They're aware of their environment and your environment. And so even now more than ever, it is so important that we um, present patients with clean cleanliness and, you know, um, high levels of infection control and instrument maintenance. So it's very simple with trays and covers. These trays, I use these in my office. They're all color coded. We have, you know, green ones for crown and bridge. We have purple for restorative. We have red for oral surgery, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this helps my assistants save time. They bring the entire, the, the entire, um, uh, tray and cover with the cassette in it. The, this shows that it's already been unwrapped, but ours are wrapped. And so then when we get to the room, of course, we unwrap those from the autoclave um, bags and, and um, cassette wraps. Um, but this helps us stay organized and safety first. And, you know, with storing all of this, these trays stack um, beautifully. This meets and exceeds the OSHA and CDC guidelines. And so um, this really increases your practice efficiency. So um, one of the things that Zerk does a great job of is is helping you. Several of their team members, Brittany and Kay and several other ones, have been clinical assistants and they know what it takes to set up an operatory. They know what it takes for each procedure. They understand the instruments and the, the equipment that you need for each um, uh, procedure. And so call them reach out to them. They're there for your resource. It's it's like an extended team member that you don't have to pay for. Um, so, so reach out to your Zerk um, team and let them help you get more organized with color and your trays and covers and cassettes. Let's move into the practice efficiency goal number three, and that is simplify, simplify, simplify. Your patients need you. They need your undivided attention. They need your reassurance. So the more that you can simplify and automate your um, office and your practice and the processes, the more you can focus on your patients. And so let me show you some easy ways to simplify in your office. This is a great way to simplify your restorative procedures, your hygiene procedures. Um, it's called the Mr. Thirsty. It is a one-step device that is a bite block with an automatic suction built in. And the beautiful thing about this is it isolates, it retracts, it evacuates, it protects them. Um, and I use this in my office on every single patient. And the only time that we don't use this if, is if the patient absolutely cannot tolerate and that is probably less than 1% of the time. Um, my patients were already used to using bite blocks and several years ago, I started implementing this in our practice 
practice. And I'm so thankful that we um, have been using this for years before all the COVID and um, aerosols and the concerns about um, COVID and coronavirus and all these things. Um, this was already in our armamentarium and we were already using this. So if you have not used this, again, reach out to your shine rep, reach out to Zerk and, and get these in your office. I promise you, it will save you so much time per procedure. It will protect your patients. And I tell my patients like this, I say, look, you know, you're used to having a bite block. This is a bite block with a suction built in and it'll keep all the yucky stuff from going down the back of your throat and going down the hatch. And so patients get that. Um, the other nice thing is that this is disposable. So you don't have to worry about autoclaving this, about cleaning this. This simply unplugs from your HVE um, uh, suction and this gets discarded. Um, the other thing you see the scissors here, you can cut and trim. So if you need to make it shorter, you know, if you need to trim some of the excess, you can absolutely do that. And um, it works beautifully. So I encourage you to use this on every single patient. My hygienists use this when they're using the Cavitron and the ultrasonic um, for patients. And, and they started using this um, when we all came back from the um, shutdown and they have thoroughly enjoyed this and they have adopted this and they have embraced this. And I'm so proud of them that they are doing their part to keep our patients healthy, to save time and to protect themselves as well as our other patients. And so I encourage you to look at this Mr. Thirsty One Step. It is a great hands-free device. And if I didn't have this in my practice, I think I may have to retire. So it is one thing that I know that I absolutely could not practice without. Um, so, you know, look into this. The other nice thing is it's made in the USA. And I know Zerk has been working really hard to keep these um, stocked. And they've had their factories going 24-7 for the past year. And they have um, really helped support us in dentistry. So look at Mr. Thirsty um, if you're not already using that. The second way to simplify in your practice is if you can see more clearly, you can be more efficient and you can do a better job. And so the Crystal HD mirror is also made by Zerk. Um, whether you buy it as a one piece mirror or you buy it in, as a um, uh, mirror head and you use your existing mirror handles that you already have in your practice. I have both. We use the one piece in hygiene and I use the mirror heads in restorative because um, I have a specific uh, mirror handle that I like. But this is absolutely another instrument that I could not live without. It is about 40% brighter than traditional mirrors. And if you think about the Crystal HD being like a high def TV, so compare that to your old tube TVs, to your new high def TVs, it's the same thing um, with this mirror. It is so clear, it is so bright, and it really helps enhance your ability to see and to be more efficient. So check these out if you haven't um, already used these in your practice. This will help you simplify and um, save you time when you're trying to look at that distal of number two or distal of number 15. So enjoy. Practice efficiency goal number four is the treatment plan project. If you want to be more efficient in your practice, you must have a productive schedule. And so where does that productive schedule come from? It comes from our existing patients. It comes from doing a chart review and looking at those patients that maybe have fallen through the cracks. Call those patients, check on those patients, see how they're doing. Yes, unfortunately, over the past year, there have been patients, you know, that have dealt with health issues. Check on them, see how they're doing, check in on them and touch base with them. Um, you know, what, what patients, what treatment plans, what information can be cleaned up in your system? You know, um, maybe they were originally treatment plan for an MOD on number three and you ended up doing a buildup in a crown. So that MOD never got deleted or removed from their treatment plan. Um, or maybe they need a crown because now the tooth is fractured. So maybe that needs to be updated. And so look at your patients, you know, start 
um, with the, the patients that are overdue on hygiene. Start with the patients that already have treatment plans in your system. Reach out to those patients. Help them maximize their dental benefits. Um, the, being efficient in the way that you're calling patients and checking on them and, and um, caring for them, that helps your entire practice be more efficient and be more productive. You know, what can you do to go paperless? If you're not already paperless, maybe there's things that you need to look at. And as you're cleaning up the treatment plans, that's one step closer to going paperless. Um, if you're not already implement, you know, entering your treatment plans in the computer, start doing that. Maybe you need some new computers. Um, you know, this is a great time to reinvest in your practice and in, invest in the technology. Um, you know, work on um, your photography and your befores and afters um, to showcase those to patients and to use those to educate your patients. You know, use um, your time wisely. Maybe there's things on Facebook and, you know, um, care credit and, and things that you need to brush up on. What's the latest, greatest um, you know, CE, Henry Schein does a great job of providing online and virtual CE and, um, you know, providing resources for your practice. And so take this time and use this to um, implement and to look at what treatment is already in your practice and what your patients already need. And then look at your patients with a fresh set of eyes. Um, when we look at our patients with a fresh set of eyes and we start to look at our beliefs and we think about, gosh, you know, what are some of the limiting beliefs that could be in my practice? And one of those is that team members and dentists have told me, you know, Tanya, we don't have time to take an FMX or our patients won't pay for an FMX. And here's the deal. I get it. Your schedule could be overloaded. You could have the good problem of having an overloaded schedule, but that's still an issue if you can't properly take care of your patients. And if you've got all these fillers or non-productive appointments that are sort of clogging the schedule. So this is how offices get on the treadmill and can't get off. And so my job is to help you work through these beliefs. And so the truth is, we have to make time to take an FMX and we have to share with our patients that maybe their dental benefits don't cover it this time, but they'll cover it next time. And so we have to talk about it. We have to um, look at the ways to end the endless cycle of emergency patients and break and fix dentistry. And this is a great way to do it. When you look at your x-ray protocol and you look, when was the last time our patients had FMXs? Now I get it. We're not talking about, you know, small children. We're talking about adults, but if you're a pedo practice or an ortho practice, when was the last time they were in for growth and development? When was the last time they had a pano? So you can substitute FMX for whatever imaging that you need and want in your practice, but sit down and and look at this as a team. Doctors, what do you want to properly diagnose your patients? And for me, I want a full series of x-rays and I want a panoramic. I want to see those jaw joints. I want to see the apices of the teeth. I want to see the bite wings included as part of this. And I want that every three years in an ideal situation. And so here's, here's a way to share with patients. A lot of times dental insurance can get in the way. And so here's a saying that I learned a long time ago from Linda Miles um, that helps your patients understand the importance of the x-rays. So let's say that your x-ray protocol like mine is that you want a full series of x-rays every three years. And let's pretend that their dental insurance XYZ only covers their X full series of x-rays every five years. That's a fairly common um, uh, uh, assumption that we have in our um, world today. And so here's how we explain that to patients. Mrs. Jones, you know what? The good news is that your dental benefits cover your full mouth radiographs every other time. So today your portion is whatever the dollar amount may be. And next time in three years, your dental benefits cover that for you and your portion will be X, Y, Z, um, or it may be zero if you're participating. But the, the key phrase is, Mrs. Jones, the good news is your dental benefits cover your full series of x-rays every other 
time. And so that gives your patients hope. It also uh, lets them understand that, you know, uh, dental insurance is for basic dentistry and it's never going to cover everything 100% and it's never going to cover everything that they need because most adults need more than basic dentistry. And by um, sharing with them I'm sure any of you that have worked in the clinical arena can testify that um, you've seen a patient that you took an x-ray and you saw something that you didn't see with your naked eye and you couldn't see if you didn't have that x-ray. Um, we had this last week where, you know, a patient had an abscess that we couldn't see. She wasn't symptomatic, but, you know, she had something that was brewing that we couldn't see. And so we're very thankful that we had taken those x-rays um, and didn't let that, you know, become a dental emergency. So, Challenge your beliefs. If you think and you believe that you don't have time to take an FMX or your patients won't accept an FMX, look at that and think through why that is and start talking to your patients because remember, your patients trust you. That's why they're in your office. And so if you truly don't have time, let's figure out a way to make the time. So maybe we, you know, schedule it an extra 20 minutes ahead of their appointment or after their appointment. Maybe we dovetail that with an assistant. You know, maybe we have a hygiene assistant. There's a zillion ways to um, work through that. But the, the key is that we're doing the best dentistry that we can for our patients. And we're working through those limiting beliefs that are in our practice. Because I promise you, when you are taking the proper radiographs for your patients, that creates efficiency and it saves time in your practice because there's generally not ever a convenient time for an emergency patient. Would you agree? And generally when patients have been up all night with a toothache, they're not really happy that they have a toothache. And so we want to do the best that we can to keep them from going down that path and keep them from having dental emergencies. And one of the ways we do that is to, to take um, routine radiographs. The next limiting belief that could be in your practice is that, gosh, I don't think our patients will accept ideal dentistry or they won't pay for ideal dentistry. And the truth is that no one will accept ideal dentistry if we don't give them the opportunity. So some might say no, most will say yes. And remember that every no that you get is one step closer to a yes. And so it reminds me of some clients that I have that, um, you know, they say, how do we, how do we help, have help patients um, accept ideal dentistry? And so there's, there's lots of ways to do this. One of the best ways is photography. And that really helps your practice be more efficient because a picture is worth a thousand words as you've heard the saying go. And so now you don't have to sit there and um, beat the patient over the head and say, Mr. Jones, this tooth is fractured. There's a Hey, there's this, there's that. You need this. Instead, when you put the picture up on the screen and the patient sees it, she starts asking you, Oh my goodness, what is that black spot or what is that dark spot or is that my tooth? And now you can have the conversation and your patients are that much closer to accepting ideal dentistry. So you're right, your patients won't accept ideal dentistry if you never give them the chance. But my, my belief is that our patients will accept ideal dentistry and also that it helps create a far more productive, efficient team and practice when your patients are doing the dentistry that you're recommending. The last limiting belief that we're gonna talk about tonight is that Team members that say, gosh, Tanya, we don't have time to take photos. We have these cameras. We have these intro cameras, but we don't have time. We're busy. We're, we're seeing, you know, eight hygiene, nine hygiene, 10 hygiene patients a day. We're running around like chickens with their heads cut off. And the truth is you can't afford not to take photos and you have the, the responsibility to your patients to take photos, because I promise you, and you can take this to the bank, the more photos you take, the more dentistry you will do, because patients can see what you see. So dust off that camera, pull it out of the box, pull it out of the closet, and start taking photos. Even if you take two photos per patient, that helps them see what you see. And so go back and figure out who's the best at photography. Who, how can they train the team? When are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? What photos are you going to take? 
and then write this down. This is what you say to patients when you start taking photos. Mrs. Jones, I'm gonna take a few photos of your teeth today so you can see what we see. So you can see what we see. And when patients start seeing what we see, it's amazing what they will accept and what um, they start to understand about their dental health and wellness. So, you know, use those before and after photos. Once you start taking all the photos, you'll have a zillion photos like I do. I created um, a before and after, um, you know, they're digital, we have them printed um, in books for our consult room. Um, we use these on our website. There's a lot of ways that we use these, but we created photos to show patients, you know, when they come in with a partial saying that they want dental implants, that, you know, here's how we took one patient, she had an old partial like you, Mrs. Jones, and we um, helped her have dental implants. And now she doesn't have teeth that come in and out. Those teeth are in her mouth. She brushes those and flosses those just like all of her other teeth. So use the time to create a before and after brag gallery um, because your patients, you know, can see this and it's very efficient. You don't have to sit and explain lots of dental terminology to patients. You don't have to explain um, every step of the procedure. When they can see the picture, they get it and they understand, you know, what's happening or what's possible. So a picture is worth a thousand words. Practice efficiency goal number five. This is my team. We were just at a team retreat this past weekend. Use the time and resources to invest in your team. This will pay huge dividends in your practice, in your patient care, in your patient loyalty. Um, this is a great time for team meetings. What does your team need? What do they want help with? Um, two of the things that we just learned at our team meeting this weekend was um, asking each other, how can I help you? So sometimes in the heat of the moment, we're all busy, you know, that phone's ringing, patients are checking in, patients are checking out, you know, patients running late, you know, patients not getting numb or, you know, whatever's happening throughout the day, sterilization gets backed up. Um, you know, I, I see patients every single day. And, and so I live this. And um, one of the things that we try to focus on as a team is how can I help you? What can I do to help you? How can I help take care of this patient? Um, and so asking your team, how can I help you? Um, and, and not only as the doctor asking the team, but team members asking each other, how can I help you? Um, and then the second thing is flipping that script. So flip the script. When you have a bad day or a bad start to the day or something doesn't go as planned, how can you flip that script? And how can you rework those beliefs and that mindset so you can refocus on being positive and having a positive mindset. Because when you flip that script, that helps you have a much uh, more productive, efficient, low stress kind of day. And that's what we want. We want you to go home happy, tired, not stressed out, tired. Um, so spend that time creating the protocols for your practice. Like I mentioned earlier, the x-ray protocol, periodontal protocol, emergency patient protocol, photography protocol, um, what's your sterilization protocol, all of these things. And again, Shine can help you with a lot of these. Um, you know, when was the last time you did your CPR training, your HIPAA training, all the things that we need to do to keep our practice running and efficient and um, our patients protected. Um, you know, what, what other systems do you need in your practice? Because your team is one of the best investments that you can make um, for your patients and for your practice. You know, doctors, have you already started your performance evals for 2021? It's only February, but let's get those finished and let's get those started for 2021 so that your team, you can give your team feedback on how they're doing and where they can improve and, you know, what they're doing well, celebrate those successes with them. And then set goals together. That's where the fun is um, because, you know, we get to work together and we work hard and play hard. And so, um, you you know, invest in your team, you'll have a more efficient practice. Um, Adam, I have a second poll question for our um, attendees. Um, we want to know what was your favorite idea from today's program? Was it the color code method? Was it the crystal HD mirror? Was it Mr. Thirsty? Was it all of the above? So take a second and um, share with us, please, what your favorite idea or favorite new, new thing is from today's program. And then Adam, once you have those results, if you'll share those with us, please.
Absolutely. I'll let them roll in for a little bit. We've got a couple minutes left and I think we're nearing the end of the presentation. So if anyone does have any questions that you'd like Dr. Brown to answer, please feel free to type them in the chat or Q&A and we'll answer them as we can. Excellent. Thank you. And it's looking like the majority that answered said all of the above. Oh, yay. I love it when you have lots of good ideas to take back to your practice and to your patients. Um, I promise you uh, these will help you be far more efficient in your practice and far more productive. It'll make your job easier because we have a tough job in dentistry and anything that we can do to make it easier is a good thing. So I want to um, sum up today's program with this quote. And this is from M. Scott Peck. And he says, our finest moments occur when we are feeling deeply uncomfortable, unhappy, or unfilled. It is only in such moments propelled by discomfort that we step out of our ruts and search for different ways or truer answers. And so if you're stuck you don't have to know everything today. Start with one area. You may try things that won't work. That's okay. I've tried everything probably at least one time. And keep trying, keep integrating new ideas, new ways. Look to the people that are doing what you want to do because you will make a difference. And remember, you will make a difference to that one and to that patient or to that team member. And so it's my hope for you that you will all step out of your ruts and search for different ways. And I'm certainly here for you as a resource. Zerk is here for you. Shine is here for you. You can have an entire practice that is efficient and full of patients that are appreciative of the care that you provide. And I hope that 2021 is a stellar year for each one of you in your practices because I know how hard you work every single day. So thank you, Zerk, and thank you, Shine, for making this possible. Possible. I'm really thrilled that I got to be a part of your day today. So thank you again. And certainly, Adam, I will take any questions that you may have. And um, I'm a resource. So anybody that needs to contact me, feel free to email me. Excellent. Thank you. We do have just a few questions. Uh, the first one appears to be how long does the color last before fading begins if fading does occur? Oh, that is a great question. I have had some of my tubs and trays for many years and they have not faded one bit. If you use the proper um, wipes and you know um, disinfectants and things on them, they will last many, many years and they do not fade. I used to have the old cassettes that yes, they faded and the tops would break off. They weren't Zerk. They were a different brand. I can't remember which brand, but anyway, several years ago, and these have not faded one bit. The the ones that we've used for several years um, look brand new, com you know, compared to the one that we pull out of the, the new box. And so um, they're very high quality resin and um, they really have not faded. So I think that you'll find the same thing. A curious question on my end, how long does it take, did it take your team to color code and organize everything? Oh, that is a great question. <laughs> we actually came in one weekend and we tore the entire office apart and then we reassembled it with the help from Brittany and Kay at Zerk. Um, we already had a plan. They had already sent us the, um, you know, dividers and all the things we'd already ordered all those things. And so we were able to reassemble following the plan and they made it super easy for us to, to reassemble everything. And so um, now it's just easy to maintain because we have a place for everything and we know where everything goes and everybody knows what the color code is and um, they can find, you know, whatever they need. So it is eliminated my assistant searching the office and my hygienist searching the office for instruments and equipment and supplies. Regarding going paperless, are offices going completely chartless or just patient forms? I'm having a hard time getting the office and doctors to transition to paperless when it comes to charts. <laughs> and then also, how long do you think it will take for an office to become chartless? 
Oh, good questions. Good questions. So I've helped many offices go chartless, paperless. Um, and yes, usually it's the doctors that are holding on to the paper. <laughs> and I was one of those. But when I broke free, um, it was a beautiful thing. So I've used Dentrix um, for uh, since I started my practice 20 years, almost 20 years ago. And it is a fantastic program. So depending on what um, program you're using, the, the biggest obstacle is you must, when you're dealing with the clinical notes and the clinical exam forms and all that stuff that you have, you must make sure that whatever you're used to writing down, charting, whatever format you're used to doing that in, that you have a place in the computer to do it. And I can almost 100% guarantee that there's probably more than one place to do it and to record that information in the computer. And once you make that transition and say, okay, we're gonna start with period charting. And from you know March the 1st, from here on, everybody that has period charting, it's gonna be in the computer. Well, that's one thing that is now one step closer to going paperless. And so I would encourage you not to throw the charts out, just keep those where you have them, you already have them. I would, I would even say that those don't necessarily need to be scanned in, not every sheet of paper and every chart and every document that's in those charts. Um, you can keep those as reference, but I don't generally recommend that you scan in all that mess of you know, stack of papers that's this high from every chart that's been in your practice for 30 years, but you start with one part. And then the second, second tip that, um, that we did to implement paperless to go paperless is we started with new patients. So we set a goal and we said, okay, on March the 1st, all new patients are going to be completely in the computer. And so then that way we transitioned. So all new patients were already in the computer and then the existing patients, as they came in, we updated their information in the computer. So you don't have to take on this huge elephant at one time. You eat an elephant one bite at a time. And um, as far as a time frame, I would estimate, depending on the size of your practice and the number of doctors and the computers and all that stuff in your office, somewhere between six to 12 months to go completely paperless. And um, I, I do have one caveat. I The one paper that we use is still route slips, but those get shredded after they're, you know, checked and whatever. Um, they get shredded at the end of the month. But we do, we do still use route slips as a communication tool within our um, practice. But other than that, every, all of our charting and all the documents and everything, all the treatment plans, everything is, is um, all in the computer and, and online. Um, if you, have Dentrix. They have wonderful signature pads you can get through Shine, um, and they work great. They integrate in a lot of places with Dentrix. Um, our forms are online. The patient information, all of our new patients fill those out before they come to the office. They're uploaded into our system, so it makes those new patient appointments a breeze versus them having a clipboard when they get there and it takes 30 minutes to fill out the paperwork or they forget it at home or they never do it or whatever. This is all automated. And so, you know, again, if you need help with that, I'm happy to be a resource and Shine certainly has tons of resources with Dentrix. Um, and that's, you know, one of my favorite programs. So, um, you know, it, it's a much, very user-friendly to go paperless and to go chartless. Great. Well, thank you, Dr. Brown, for the very colorful presentation. <laughs> and, and thank you to Zurich for sponsoring tonight's webinar. If anyone does have additional questions about color coding, feel free to email Dr. Brown directly, or you can email us at webinars at henryshine.com. Additionally, if you are interested in attending future Henry Shine webinars, visit henryshinedental.com slash webinars for our upcoming schedule. As a thank you for attending tonight, everyone will receive this recording via email sometime in the next week. I'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight, and we hope to see you on future webinars. Thank you so much. Have a great evening.